Welcome to the Good Friday Experience at Delaney Street Baptist Church. We are so glad that you have chosen to take this time to focus on who Jesus Christ is and to remember His sacrifice of love for every one of us. We have designed this experience to be a time of personal reflection. This is our prayer as you begin. Lord God, we are overwhelmed that you would come to this earth as a human being to suffer and die for our sins. We pray that this time of remembrance through scripture and prayer will be impactful and that we would each discover a deeper relationship with you, our creator and our rescuer. It is our desire that Jesus will become more famous because of this experience tonight. Amen. You are now ready to begin the Good Friday experience. As you open the door, you will find yourself in the upper room at the Last Supper. The Last Supper On the first day of the Jewish festival of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb was being sacrificed, Jesus' disciples prepared the Passover meal in a large furnished upper room. As they were reclining at the table and eating, Jesus took some bread, and after a blessing he broke it and gave it to them and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And when he had taken a cup and given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. And he said to them, This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many. After supper, Jesus got up and laid aside his garments, and taking a towel, he girded himself. Then he poured water into the basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel. So when he had washed their feet and taken his garments and reclined at the table again, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for so I am. If I then, the Lord and the teacher, washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I gave you an example that you also should do as I did to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a slave is not greater than his master, nor is one who is sent greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you are happy if you do them. Then Jesus and his disciples sang a hymn together, and they went out to the Mount of Olives. Jesus calls us to a life of service to others. There are two parts to this station. First, you will see a Passover meal on a table before you, representing the final dinner that Jesus and his disciples shared. Feel free to touch and even sample some of the items. Then, just as Jesus washed his disciples' feet, we will have some people at the other end of the lobby who are available to wash and dry your feet as well. When you are finished in this room, you may proceed through the far door into the Garden of Gethsemane and begin Track 3. The Garden of Gethsemane Jesus and his disciples came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here until I have prayed. And he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be very distressed and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is deeply grieved to the point of death. Remain here and keep watch. And he went a little beyond them and fell to the ground and began to pray that if it were possible, the hour might pass him by. And as he was saying, Abba, Father, all things are possible for you. Remove this cup from me, yet not what I will, but what you will. And he came and found them sleeping and said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Keep watching and praying that you may not come into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And again he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to answer him. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and resting? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is being betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up. Let us be going. Behold, the one who betrays me is at hand. 
Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, came up, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who were from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now he who was betraying him had given them a signal, saying, Whomever I kiss, he is the one. Seize him and lead him away under guard. After coming, Judas immediately went to him, saying, Rabbi, and kissed him. They laid hands on him and seized him, and his disciples all left him and fled. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Prayer was essential to Jesus' life and ministry. How would you describe your prayer life? Remain here in the garden and talk with God as long as you like. When you are ready, you may move across the sanctuary to the next station and begin track four. The Trial and Scourging Early in the morning, the chief priests with the elders and scribes and the whole Sanhedrin immediately held a consultation, and binding Jesus, they led him away and delivered him to Pilate. Pilate questioned him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, It is as you say. The chief priests began to accuse him harshly. Then Pilate questioned him again, saying, Do you not answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further answer, so Pilate was amazed. Pilate said to them, What shall I do with him whom you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him. But Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? But they all shouted all the more, Crucify him. Wishing to satisfy the crowd, Pilate had Jesus scourged, then handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers took him away into the praetorium, and they called together the whole Roman battalion. They dressed him up in purple, and after twisting a crown of thorns, they put it on him, and they began to acclaim him, Hail, King of the Jews! They kept beating his head with a staff, and spitting on him, and kneeling and bowing before him. After they had mocked him, they took the purple robe off him, and put his own garments on him, and they led him out to crucify him. Pause for a few minutes to meditate on the torture that Jesus endured because of his great love for us. On a table, you will find a staff, a whip, a crown of thorns, a purple robe, and a sack of 30 silver coins, the price of betrayal. Touch and hold each of these items to allow them to transport you back to that cruel moment almost 2,000 years ago. When you are ready, you may move to the cross at the front of the sanctuary and begin track five. The Cross Then the soldiers brought Jesus to Golgotha, which is translated, place of a skull. And they crucified him and divided up his garments among themselves, casting lots for them to decide what each man should take. It was 9 a.m. when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. They crucified two robbers with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by were hurling abuse at him, wagging their heads and saying, Ha! Save yourself and come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests also, along with the scribes, were mocking him among themselves and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let this Christ, the King of Israel, now come down from the cross so that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him were also insulting him. When noon came, darkness fell over the whole land until 3 p.m. Then Jesus cried out with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a reed, and gave him to drink. And Jesus uttered with a loud cry, It is finished, and breathed his last. And the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion, who was standing right in front of him, saw the way he breathed his last, he said, Truly this man was the Son of God. 
Truly, this man was the Son of God. Roman crucifixion was a cruel mode of execution. Take some time to hold the hammer and nails. Roll the dice the soldiers used to gamble for Jesus' clothing. Handle the spear that pierced his side. Remember the cross. You may linger here as long as you want, and then move across the sanctuary to the tomb and begin track six when you are ready. The Tomb When evening had already come, because it was the preparation day, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea came, a prominent member of the council, who himself was waiting for the kingdom of God, and he gathered up courage and went in before Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate granted the body to Joseph. Joseph bought a linen cloth, took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth and laid him in a tomb which had been hewn out in the rock. And he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, were looking on to see where he was laid. Now I make known to you the good news by which you are saved, that Christ died for our sins, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and that he appeared to Peter, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 people at one time, most of whom are still alive today. At just the right time, God sent his son, born of a woman, for God loved the world in this way, that he gave his one and only son, so that everyone who believes in him will not perish, but have eternal life. God proves his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of our sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. If you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved from your sin. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Have you ever wondered why we call this Good Friday? What part of a bloody crucifixion could be considered even remotely good? Well, this Friday was good for two reasons. First, because Jesus did not remain in the grave. On Sunday morning, he rose again, proving that he has ultimate power over death, mankind's greatest enemy. It was also a good Friday because of what Jesus' death has provided for every person. Every one of us has sinned and rebelled against God, and we all deserve death in hell. But Jesus paid for our sin on the cross. He offers to you the gift of eternal life if you will take it, if you will surrender to Him as the Lord and ruler of your life. We have prayer counselors available who would love to sit down with you and talk about how you can know 100% for sure that you are God's child and have eternal life. They would also like to pray with you about anything else in your life that you would like to bring to God for help. I hope that you have been challenged and encouraged spiritually this evening. We invite you to celebrate Easter with us this Sunday morning at 11 o'clock. Thank you for coming. May God bless you as you continue to remember the old rugged cross.